today I have a special guest. I'm super excited about bringing him to you. A lot of you, if you're on YouTube a lot, you probably recognize this person. Uh, but I am collaborating with Hector Garcia, a fellow CPA. But Hector, you're in private practice too, right? Correct. Uh, Jamie, first of all, hello. I'm a big fan of your work um, as well. I think you're doing God's work with the amount of information you have given us, especially in the whole world of 2020 and the PPPs and the EIDLs. I think I use you as a resource quite a bit for my own research Thank from my you. video. So, so congrats on, on everything you've done there. So I do have a regular practice. I have a, an office in Miami with eight employees and we take in the average bookkeeping and accounting and tax client. Uh, but that's my day job. My night job is I try to, I'm trying to become a YouTuber full time, right? And that's a kind of a difficult task is a, big task. Uh, but uh, I figured out how to coexist to run my accounting practice, use the insights from my accounting practice, and turn them into insightful videos into my YouTube channel. Now, I started doing YouTube about seven years ago, and I did it because I started a webinar series called QB Power Hour. It was basically one hour webinar, all QuickBooks, kind of just downloading stuff from my brain into a webinar. And I turned that into little videos in YouTube for the purpose of getting people to rewatch. And then those ended up being the most popular ones, the, the QuickBooks mm -hmm. videos. So even though I still sprinkle every once in a while in an accounting video and a and a sort of government tax credit update type of video, uh, QuickBooks has become sort of the central theme of my YouTube channel. And I have both my accounting practice and I monetize on YouTube by having you know, tons of viewers and, and subscribers and all that stuff. Absolutely. So you are, dare I say, the guru of QuickBooks on YouTube. I remember actually when I got an email from you at one point, I'm like, the Hector Garcia. <laughs> so to other other accountants and other CPAs, you know, <laughs> you're famous. Yeah. Um, so I, I try to tell my wife that, you know, hey, I'm famous outside this house and she doesn't believe me. Yeah, she doesn't. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. yeah I get that. <laughs> I get that. Uh, okay, so today we wanted to talk a little bit about getting the best deal on QuickBooks. So that's the one thing that comes also with being a QuickBooks guru, right? You know how to get the best deal on QuickBooks. And I've been able to partner with you on this. So tell us a little bit about the deal that's going and why it's really, really important, especially if you're listening to this uh, before the end of September 2021. If you're listening to this before September 30th, 2021, I want you to listen in. And even if you're not, we're gonna, still going to tell you how to get the best deal. But if you're right. listening to this in September 2021, you're in luck. So tell us a little bit about that, Hector. Right. So one, one thing I do want to add, the word QuickBooks gets thrown out there without a lot of context sometimes. Yes. And QuickBooks is a huge brand that talks about two things. It talks about QuickBooks desktop, which is sort of a world of difference to QuickBooks online. But most new entrepreneurs, most modern entrepreneurs they don't really want to deal with desktop software uh, um, they want to work on the cloud they want to work on the mobile phone so quickbooks online becomes most of people's starting point when they think of quickbooks they don't think of quickbooks online or desktop but they're probably thinking online now the whole online and desktop are terms that accountants use amongst each other so we understand what we're talking about but for the average user quickbooks just means the online version the ones on the phone yep. the one that's on the on the cloud uh, and the primary reason for that is because it works on a Mac, it works on a PC, it works on an iPhone, it works on an Android, it works on a Chrome, you know, with the desktop platform that only works on Windows. And there is a Mac version, but that's sort of the redheaded stepchild of, of, of that world anyway. It's only small sort of uh, cult-like number of users that use QuickBooks Desktop for Mac. So QuickBooks Desktop really means the PC version. And I have tons of affinity towards it. If you follow me on YouTube, you see I got tons of videos on QuickBooks desktop windows version but the vast majority of the crowd what people are asking for is cloud-based mobile first direct connectivity with other apps and with banks and those are the things that the cloud and the online version can offer so if you are in the market for purchasing quickbooks online to for purchasing a subscription and you're watching this prior to october 2021 when you use the affiliate link that jamie has which is the same affiliate link that I have, uh, you are going to get a 50% discount for 12 months, regardless of what version of QuickBooks that you use. So at the, as at the day of this video, and we'll probably dig into like the different versions, but the lowest version is 25 bucks a month. So that would be 1250 for 12 months. And the highest version, the most powerful one is 180 a month. 
So that'll be 90 for uh, the first 12 months. Now, after September, Intuit decided to completely do away with a 50% offer just because it wasn't par to market and value. And, and they tr truly strongly believe that they don't need to discount the product as deeply anymore as they were in the past four or five years where they were trying to buy in the desktop crowd that wasn't believing on the cloud anymore. But the market has completely shifted. People are used to paying monthly for their software. Microsoft has done it. Uh, Adobe has done it. I mean, all the big players have figured out how to how to how to deliver a service and a piece of software simultaneously, continuously to add upgrades and add value to it. And most small business owners just see it as a cost of doing business, and they're sort of over the paying for desktop one time forever, and they pay the lower upfront cost of paying for that monthly fee. So, so Intuit has decided that they're going to change that fifty percent discount to a different number. Uh, you will know that in October, but if I had to guess, it'll be somewhere between 29% and 31%. So, <laughs> but uh, but, but uh, they haven't told us that we can say the exact percentage. Either way, that's a great deal. I mean, you got, you know, 50% of, of a software for 12 months. Um, if the software is worth what it's worth, even without the discount, you know, getting that upfront discount helps lessen the blow of the operating costs that it takes to get it up and running because you're going to spend additional time setting it up or researching or maybe hire a pro, um, you know, like the, the people in my world, pro advisors that will help you kind of customize the chart of accounts and customize the reports and kind of acclimate QuickBooks to your industry, to your needs. And that, that's the logic behind giving a discount for 12 months because Intuit knows that you can't just open an accounting software for the first time and all of a sudden become an accountant just because you bought a $25 piece of software, right? So so there will be some help that you will need in some capacity, whether it's you training yourself, you reading a book, you hiring a pro, you asking your accountant, you going into YouTube and binge watching my videos, whatever it happens to be, there will be a cost component to getting into QuickBooks to, to do it right and to have a pleasant experience with it. Yeah. Yeah, I love all that. So the uh, the link is below jamietroll.com forward slash QuickBooks to snag the best deal. So again, if it's before the end of September, you're going to get that 50% off deal. And we'll talk about a couple of things just to keep in mind with that to make sure you get the best deal. If it's after October 1, there's going to be a different deal. Like Hector said, probably somewhere between 29 and 31%, <laughs> somewhere in there right, right. <laughs> that you will get, but still will be the best deal that you'll be able to get because it's for a full year and you get the free trial. So if you go directly to the QuickBooks website, you cannot get this deal. This is something that only um, certain people like Hector and like myself uh, can partner with QuickBooks and be able to get. So it's definitely going to be the best deal. And you definitely, I didn't um, I didn't think about the fact that the reason that QuickBooks has always done kind of this 50% off thing, right, is because they really were trying to pull people along, right, to get them from desktop into this new world. And now we're right. more used to it. That's what we're looking for. We want accessibility everywhere. We want to be able to have uh, to have that, you know, being able to share with different users and one version of the truth and all the integrations. That's what I love about QuickBooks Online. And so that's an interesting point that you make that they're like, well, okay, we've done this for a while. Now we're moving away. So that was right. one of the questions I was going to ask is, is it possible that Someday this comes back, this 50% off comes back and we need to wait around for it. But I think the answer is probably no. I don't right, think Hector? so. I don't think so. And I'm going to tell you why I don't think so. Because QuickBooks made a livelihood selling their QuickBooks desktop for 30 years. I mean, QuickBooks desktop has existed since the 90s. Yeah. If you actually go to my YouTube channel and you put uh, QuickBooks 1992 or something like that, you will see me doing a comparison between the 1992 version and the online version. It's a pretty interesting, super nerdy way to like kind of look at it but you know there was software in the 90s and even though i was a teenager i've always been this nerdy so um you know i've 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 encountered dos software and windows 3.5 you know through you know the old school version of windows software and i still remember what desktop software was like even back then so just imagine accounting software for the home business or small business was invented in the 90s and has evolved to what now it's QuickBooks Online, but QuickBooks Desktop still exists. Mm -hmm. And this year, uh, together with the same announcement of making this price discount change, they've also announced that the desktop version will no longer be sold as a one-off software. So for the people that stick with QuickBooks Desktop, which I have, again, I have my own love towards it. It's a different context of love. Okay? It's like choosing between kids, right? I love desktop. <laughs> I love online. 
I love them both, but one's good at one thing and one's good at something else. I recognize their, their own their, 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 their own thing. QuickBooks Desktop will now be sold like QuickBooks Online. You will pay an annual subscription. So it would no longer be sort of a one-time cost. And it's still desktop software. It's still physically installed in your computer. Your computer needs to be on. You got to be looking at it. Um, you got to send a file to your accountant to collaborate. All the clunkiness of desktop software is still all there. Uh, but now you pay annually for it, kind of like the same way you pay uh, monthly for QuickBooks Online. So because they made that announcement that they're also doubling down on subscriptions for QuickBooks Desktop and seeing their stock price and seeing what they're investing in, not just marketing, but also innovation, I don't think they're going to go backwards in pricing. I think they're only going to be, be going forward. And probably the businesses that grow with QuickBooks are the ones that are going to stick with it. And maybe there might be a competitor that will undercut QuickBooks and start hitting that you know, under $25 a month market. So. so tell me then, so that leads me to the next question. For anybody who's on the fence, who's like, ah, this sounds like a great deal, but I'm not necessarily sure I'm sold on QuickBooks being what I want to use for my accounting for my small business. Why QuickBooks? Why are you the QuickBooks guy and not like the zero guy or something like that, Hector? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I think if you call your accountant or call an accountant, just like go to Google and type CPA near me, I just call them randomly and say, do you guys support zero or do you support Sage Accounting or do you support FreshBooks or do you support Wave or Zoho Books or just name all the competitors out there? Most people are going to say, what is that? You know, like, so unfortunately for the small business community, the accounting community, QuickBooks is, a is completely trenched into our daily lives. It is the tool that we use. Um, you know, like it would be ridiculous for you to ask a, an accountant, would you support the Excel spreadsheet that will send you with data? If they say no, then they're not really an accountant. They're somebody that calls themselves an accountant. It's become just normal, like spreadsheets and Excel has yeah. become normal. And QuickBooks is sort of in the same path. Most accountants use QuickBooks, have been trained in QuickBooks. I think that uh, QuickBooks did a brilliant move. I would say early 2014 and 15, when it really started getting deep into QuickBooks Online, they toured around the country and trained and certified accountants for free. Right, So in many ways, they indoctrinated us into the QuickBooks product. Um, I was part of the of the council of accountants that basically give, the, we flew to California and we sat next to the developers and they just kind of pick our brain on, is this working, is this not working? So I've experienced firsthand what Intuit is doing not just to indoctrinate accountants into QuickBooks Online, but also indoctrinate themselves, quote unquote, on what accountants want. So the massive amount of accountant support has really meant, uh, has really made QuickBooks the gold standard. But if you can't afford QuickBooks or you have this fantasy that some other product is better than QuickBooks, and it's okay, it's a free country, you can do that. But uh, but I, we could, I could prove pretty much how everything else out there on the same price range is pretty much garbage. Uh, because they haven't, they don't have the 30 plus years of experience building and developing and reiterating and getting accountant feedback on accounting software. So QuickBooks is best in class, and I think they can afford to charge a little bit more. They're sitting pretty from that perspective. But the closest competitor to QuickBooks, I would say, is Zero, right? In pricing and in features. However, Zero might be a wonderful program for accounting and accountants, but there's certain things that QuickBooks can do, like automate email reports, automatically download things from the bank, automatically download bank statements from the bank. You know, it's a whole bunch of things that QuickBooks can do that other softwares are still sort of work in progress and getting that right, where QuickBooks has just nailed it um, in the head. Reports, QuickBooks beats every other, again, in the same category, uh, uh, cloud-based like small business accounting software with reports. Yeah. So I think that's why people you know, stick to it. And and, and honestly, I, I like the company. I've, I'm a stockholder. I'm a, I'm an advisor for them. I've, I trained for them. I go to the annual conference and meet other accountants and there really isn't anything else uh, like it. Um, and yes, they're a huge company and they make a lot of money and, you know, you can vilify them for it, but, <laughs> you know, but if, if your small business runs on QuickBooks and it saves you hours and hours of labor and frustration, then you get your money's worth. Yeah, they know what they do, they're doing. They've been around the block a few times. They know what they're doing. They There are also so many different integrations with QuickBooks. That's one of the things that I love too, is they integrate really well with pretty much anything else that you're using. Um, so again, it is a, it's best in class. And the support, right, it's much easier if you want to go look up tutorials to do all kinds of things 
um, on how to do them. It's going to be harder for some of those smaller, more niche products. But if you go look for QuickBooks tutorials, well, guess what? I know who you need to go to. <laughs> <laughs> there's one channel you need to subscribe to, but there's a lot out there to be able to help. So that's one of the great things about QuickBooks as well. Okay, a couple, two things I wanna clarify. So again, jamietroll.com forward slash QuickBooks. I'm gonna jump into it really quick just to show you what it looks like. And then I'm also gonna clarify too, that this is only for new users. Um, and the other thing that we wanna keep in mind too, is that if you're getting this discount, especially if you're trying to get it before the end of September, 2021, the one tip that Hector has to make sure you get the discount, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So. I work with QuickBooks long enough to tell you that they are not a perfect company. They have tons of flaws. And I don't know when they make this transition from September 50% off to October, somewhere between 29 and 31% off deal, right? When they make the transition, I don't know if somebody signs up for the free trial, let's say September 29th, and doesn't put the credit card until October, if you can still get the 50. I'm, I'm assuming that you can scream loud enough and, and, and prove that you signed up prior to that change in discount. But I think to like sort of secure the 50%, if you're I mean, if you're watching this now and this is your time to execute, um, just put your credit card number in there. They will not charge you until the 30 days pass. So you get the 30 day trial regardless. It's sort of a gift to you. You get 30 day trial, even if you put the credit card on day one, they will charge you the first month when the credit card's over. And then in the next 12 months, it would be a 50% discount. So just putting your credit card to lock in the discount because I don't know, again, if you signed up in September and then you put the credit card in October, I don't know what will happen. Worst case scenario, if you are in that situation, I'll give my email out, hector at garciacpa.com. You email me and I have wonderful people that respond immediately to my, my email. So it'll be easier than trying to go to support and explain this whole thing to them. And, and I usually tell people too, it's best practice to put your credit card in because if you forget and you don't, you know, see the alerts or things like that and your free trial expires, your discount is going to go away, will disappear. Right? Yes, it yeah. will disappear. Correct. So that's why it's really good to put that credit card on file just so that you don't accidentally, you know, let the discount expire. And right. then you're wondering where the heck your, your uh, percentage off went. Correct. So here's Correct. just what it's going to look like. I just wanted to show really quickly um, what this will look like. So if you are jumping in here, jamietroll.com forward slash QuickBooks, you're going to pick your, um, your, whichever one works for you. You can read down below the different things that they do. So it goes all the way from $25 a month, which again, these top numbers do not include the discount. If you read that, that below, it says 30 day trial, then 1250 for 12 months. That's what you get with this link. So just uh, sometimes it's not super clear to people, but you get, you know, read that second line. That's what you're going to get as a discount. Um, I, will, I, I need to add something really important to that. Thanks. Again, if you sign up prior to the end of September yes. and you pick the version, you get 50% for 12 months. Yes. If you upgrade or downgrade in the middle of this 12 month period, the system is not designed to apply the discount to the upgrade or to the downgrade, okay? And because the 50% will no longer exist, if you upgrade or downgrade, I can still have somebody in into it override the discount for you, but it will be the current 30%, right? So, so you do want to study up on the versions first and get the right one that works for you. Again, especially if you are doing this prior to October, if you're doing this, if you're watching this after October, like ignore the whole 50% thing that's, that's in the past. It's, it's no longer relevant. Yeah. And, and you get 30% on whatever you get. Whoops. <laughs> you mean 29 to 31? Yes. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. You will get X percent on, 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 on whatever version you pick. And then if you upgrade or downgrade, the discount will disappear, but someone can override it and apply the current 30, 29 to 31% discount to it for the remaining of the, of the 12 months. So that's a really important one. That's kind of pick the right one. Um, yeah. And that's it. Absolutely. And if you follow me, you know, I also talk a lot about how if we look at you know, tracking our data as just something we do for taxes, we are missing out on all the richness that comes with having something like QuickBooks that has this amazing reporting function. There are people who use it don't, who don't even know all the power at their fingertips, all the data at their fingertips that they can use to make the best decisions in their business in order to make more money. So it's not just about, yes, we want to have you know, all this collected and ready for us for taxes. Great. But that's really the secondary reason. The first reason is to manage your business. And that's why I love QuickBooks. Um, most of all is just the, the, all the tools and the data you can have access to 
through using something like this that you don't really have if you're using, you know, a spreadsheet or something different that you're just kind of, you know, Correct. doing it so that you can be compliant for taxes and not get in trouble by the tax man, right? Right. I think I think the magic number to think about is fifty thousand. If, if you are selling more than fifty thousand a year, if you're bringing in more than fifty thousand a year, um, you should not be doing stuff in a spreadsheet. Period. I mean, just like it, what QuickBooks or whatever software you pick is a cost of doing business. Yeah. You got to take a look at the percentage, right? So if you're just to say a number, you're paying five hundred dollars a year for accounting software, and you're bringing in. $50,000 in sales. That's 1% of your sales. So you're going to reinvest 1% of your sales on keeping your stuff together in a place that you understand what the heck is going on. Yeah. Um, you know, spreadsheets are, you know, I love spreadsheets. They're my first love. Don't tell QuickBooks that. Uh, right. And I still, and I still, you know, use it. And I still, I'm amazed when I run a pivot table, I'm amazed at the power of, of spreadsheets, but um, spreadsheets have a, a really big issue. One, version control, like you send spreadsheets back and forth. Am I working on the latest version? Who touched it? Who changed it, right? First issue. Second, you don't have, you can't reconcile. You can't create guardrails to make sure your stuff is accurate or it comes from a true place. With QuickBooks, it comes from the bank. It gets matched to a bank transaction, to a credit card transaction. Everything is balanced. So when you're looking at it, you're not suspecting that this could be wrong. Because in my experience, what stops small business owners from leveraging their financial data to make decisions is it might be wrong anyway. And this, this, all this stuff happens subconsciously. It might be wrong anyway. So, you know, should I even, you know, spend my time, uh, you know, just with input and the reconciling and the organizing, because at the end, when I get the data out, I don't have the confidence that it's going to be accurate. So I'm going to be depending on my gut feeling anyway, and the data is not really there to support it. Whereas when you use QuickBooks or a competitor, it doesn't matter, and it's well organized and reconciled, now you get to trust it. Yeah. And when you trust it, it's a huge load of your mind, right? Because you can, so you can concentrate on serving your clients, on being innovative, on changing the world, one product, one service at a time, and allow the accounting to be the support mechanism, not the burden that stops you or slow, slows you down from fulfilling your purpose. Exactly. Exactly. I fully concur with all of that. Also, spreadsheet your nerds unite. <laughs> that is definitely me. But you need to have something like this. It's really going to help you power your business, and it's an asset to you. I mean, not an actual asset on your balance sheet, but it's <laughs> it, is, it is something to help you with your business, not hinder you. Really, it's 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 right. uh, it's for your business to help you grow it. Okay, Hector. So I am so, so excited that you joined us. Thank you so, so much. Whatever your wife says, you're a celebrity in my eyes. So I appreciate <laughs> having you here. And again, go run and get the best discount possible right now. JamieTroll.com forward slash QuickBooks. And I will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.